各位同学，大家好。Good morning, fellow practitioners. <coughs> 那我们呢？昨天谈怎么样把这个方法呢带回去？有静态中用功的这个方法。那么这个方法一般上呢，是我们在禅修课程里面。比较啊、呃，主要的这个部分啊，就是我们在禅坐的。那么我们来禅修呢，呃，大部分也是为了能够有一个比较稳定，然后比较长时间的这个静坐来练习啊，我们禅修的这个方法。但是呢，我们也知道说。呃，虽然这个是很中心，就禅修里面呢，核心的这个部分，但是呢，呃，这种有形式，而且呢，在静态中用功的这个方法呢，在我们日常生活中，即使呢我们知道它很重要，然后也会尽量的安排时间，但是在日常生活中。<咳>我们比较没有办法呢，有那么长时间的静坐，所以呢，我们以这个为参修的这个中心。那么在练习这个方法的时候呢，就是能够专注，然后安稳，啊，有种漠然不动摇的这个功夫，然后也很清楚的觉照，啊，觉照自己的身心。觉照这个外在的这个环境。那么我们在参修的方法里面呢，是让我们这两个心理的这个功能能够慢慢的统一啊，然后不断的在加强这方面的功夫的同时，我们也练习呢在动态中怎么样用功。同样的动态中，我们也是清楚的觉照。然后把心专注在我们身心的这个状态里面<咳>，那么这样子呢，我们就能够经常保持在身心安稳，然后清楚觉照的那个状态里面。那么在这个状态的时候呢，我们的心比较敏锐，啊，对自己身心所处的。这个状态清楚，然后对我们所处的环境啊，或者是我们在应对一些事情的时候呢，那个因缘啊，外在的因缘也能够比较清楚的照见。那么这样子呢，我们清楚照见的时候呢，又能够让我们的心比较安稳啊，不容易呢被这个呃外境或者是。自己身心一些不舒服的角色呢，干扰啊，所以呢，我们能够心比较能够做得了主。那么清楚觉照，心又做得了主的时候呢，我们在日常生活中应对很多事情的时候，我们就能够把这个事情呢处理的比较好。那么我们在动态中啊、呃、用功。实际上，也是我们日常生活中比较主要的，就是说，我们日常生活也是在动态中比较多，所以我们在练这个动态中用功的方法呢，就占了比较多的时间啊。所以我们呢，在日常生活中，除了静态的用功，还有呢，就是动态中的这个功夫，那么经常呢，保持。那么这个是我们日常生活中用功的啊很主要的这个部分。那么这些功夫呢，在运用的过程里面呢，都是为了让我们的心能够安稳，让我们的心能够自主，让我们的心清楚的能够敏锐的觉照到身心和外在的这个环境
那么这个对我们在生活中处理事情、跟应对问题的时候呢，它能够发挥很大的这个作用。So yesterday, <coughs> we talked about how to bring the method back home. Because what we're doing here, for the most part, on this retreat is, on meditation retreats, we maximize the amount of time for sitting meditation. Because sitting meditation, although it's not、uh, the complete practice of Chan, it's not the only practice. Sitting meditation is the core. Practice、uh, that we have, <coughs> which allows us to、um, very easily cultivate this concentration and awareness, because we're just sitting still. We've temporarily put aside all kinds of activities, and it allows us to emphasize and put all of our attention on our method. Just sitting, cultivating this stability of mind. Uh, based on concentration and awareness, <clears throat> and of course, throughout the retreat, we also have activities、uh, which are in movement. And again, we continue to use our method amidst that, these activities. And so, when we go home with the sitting practice, we make sure we arrange time for our sitting practice. Make sure that we can.、Um, Uh, have a schedule or a routine of sitting meditation, and to continue to develop and cultivate this、um, quality of a silent yet illuminating mind, a mind that's unmoved, a mind that's very stable, yet at the same time very clear. But in daily life, because we can't, you know, we can't do sitting meditation for you know, too long, because our daily life requires that we have a lot of different activities. And、uh, we find that most of our daily life is in a state of activity, in a state of movement. And so, at those times, we apply ourselves to those activities. We apply again this principle of concentration and awareness to all the activities that we engage in. And we'll find that if we continue with this practice, if we really apply ourselves, we'll find that our awareness becomes more and more acute or sharp. And with a sharper awareness, with this sharper awareness and、um, uh, clarity of the situation of our body and mind, you know, with a stable mind that we cultivate through meditation, this awareness becomes sharp, so that in daily life、uh, we're very clear as to the state of our body and mind, very clear as to the, the reactions that are occurring, things that are happening, and because of that. We're able to maintain the stability of our body and mind, and with this acute awareness, we're also more aware of the environment, also aware of the various situations that we encounter, the various people that we interact with, the various things that we have to take care of. <clears throat> and being more aware of these things, with a sharper awareness, we'll see these situations much more clearly. And because we can see the situation much more clearly, we're able to then handle the situation much more appropriately, and handle it、um, in the best way. So,、uh, with this Chan practice in daily life, we bring what we've been working on in retreat back home, both in the practice of stillness, in particular sitting meditation, and then in movement, in all these different situations of our daily life. And again, we'll find that we become very sharp, very aware of our situation, situation around us, which allows us to handle things、uh, in an appropriate way. And so, this is the basic、um, manner in which we bring this practice back home. We, many Chan practitioners. 都希望说，在这个禅期啊，或者是禅期里面呢，得到一些这个体验
哦，最好是能够开悟啊、哦，或者是在打坐的过程中，有很多不同的那种经验、不同的境界出来。<咳>那么，如果是我们来打一个气，睡了七天，打了七天的妄想，数呼吸数了七天，数目字还常常跑掉啊、哦，然后或者是。觉照全身，嗯、啊，觉照到眼睛就忘记了耳朵，啊，然后就空腹都一直，哎，用不上去，啊，就会觉得，哎呀，自己大概不是参修的料，然后这实在太失败了啊。那么有些好一点的就，哦，数呼吸数的不错，那就是一个气下来就是一直在数呼吸。啊，然后要睡也睡不到，或者是在用功的过程里面呢，发觉自己呢有用了一些方法，但是呢都没有很好的用，然后呢，要身体很痛酸，然后妄念很多，所以呢，一个气打下来的时候，呃，信心都快没了，呃，我打气怎么没有？惊艳到各种各样的境界，啊，怎么没有开悟？怎么没有啊？什么好的觉受出来？那么就觉得说，哎呀，这个气大了，还是没意思了啊。那么如果这个气里面呢，有很多不同的这个经验，哇，见到光，听到声音。当然，每天都听到声音，只是打坐的时候听到比较不同的声音，哦，说不定还是什么天上有地下无的那种音乐啊、哦，什么之类的啊、哦，修到，哎呦，我们竟然在香港道场这边修到牡丹的香啊、哦，牡丹是在洛阳开的嘛啊、哦，而且是五六月开的嘛啊。哦怎么现在都修到，然后觉得哇，哇这个很厉害了，那么就觉得哦，我这个有用上功夫了。然后呢，我们就认为这个就是禅修了。然后这个打完气了以后回去呢，虽然在打气的时候又修到什么牡丹啊，修到听到什么天乐啊。见到什么光啊？可是回到家里的时候呢，啊，去上班的时候，看到你的下属呢做事情不对，脸色一变，啊，就把他骂了一顿。然后你说我我禅修很有经验的呢，我禅修功夫很好的呢，啊，然后家里什么事情发生，马上就情绪就发作了。然后就很多的这个，平时以前还没有禅修以前的那些惯性啊、习气啊，全部还是照样跑出来。那我们很多人认为呢，这个就是禅修，也就是说，你去打坐用功，在那个时间里面呢，你有很多的经验、很多的体验，然后呢，有很多呃超乎你。平时经验的那种体验出来，然后有很多的状况，这个就叫做用功。可是呢，没有的话就不算了。那么那些呢，来打气啊、哦，来到这边，功夫没有用的很好，但是呢，比较懂得啊、哦，原来这个呼吸啊，嗯，原来是平时自己呢不懂得呼吸啊、哦，因为常常呢，很容易出在。呃，紧张或者是那种情绪波动的状态，所以这个呼吸常常很粗啊。现在来这边学会，虽然没有数得很好，但是嗯，对这个呼吸比较清楚了。原来自然呼吸是这样的，平时呢自己很多时候是不自然的啊，因为有情绪嘛。然后回去的时候呢，啊，遇到一些逆境出现，哇，自己又绷紧了。呼吸又很粗了，马上警觉，哎，不对，哎
我在禅修的时候，呼吸应该是很自然的、很放松的，啊，很柔的。那么你就快点啊，把这个呼吸调开，数一，呃，虽然没有数到十，但是呢，这个呼吸就平和下来。呼吸平和下来的时候呢，这个情绪呢就安定了，啊，本来遇到那个事情呢，以平常的惯性呢，就啪，这个情绪就出去了。可是呢，现在。察觉到呼吸很粗了啊，不行，这个调和呼吸，数呼吸，虽然还没有数到十，这个呼吸就调和了。然后这个是这个时候呢，再来看那个事情的时候，哎，觉得其实这个事情有没有那么严重啊？也不需要自己发脾气来处理啊，自己可以用更好的方式、更温和的方式来处理啊。结果呢，你因为察觉到呼吸了以后呢，把呼吸调和了。啊，那么可能跟你互动的人已经准备好，你你的那个看到你呼吸一出的时候，准备说完了，这下子你的那个又要出来了。可是看到你数一数二，哎，慢慢停下来，然后呢，笑笑的跟他讲，没事没事。哦，他可惊喜嘞，哦。你禅修回来的时候，哎呀，你的脾气改了，情绪就很快就调和了、温和了。那么你说，哪一个才叫做禅修呢？哪一种才叫做禅修？呀，有很多体验回去，啪，朝阳出来。还是说，虽然没有修得很好，可是马上警觉自己的问题，然后呢，马上就懂得用方法。把自己的情绪，把自己呼吸调好，然后用一个比较好的态度来处理问题。你们要哪一种禅修？ It's possible that after this Chan retreat, when it's time to go home, for the people who feel that they didn't have such a good retreat, or maybe. Just slept the whole seven days. It's a sleeping retreat. I feel, ah,、oh, what a waste! Slept through the whole retreat. <clears throat> Or they go home, and、uh, they think about how they were practicing, and realize that, you know, I wasn't even able to count my breath. Can't even count my breath. Or that they feel that they could count their breath, but they really wanted to be able to follow the breath. I you know, really want to be able to let go of the number and then follow the breath, and then of course,、uh, you know, still the mind, unify the mind. Of course, they may have been expecting that. Well, on this retreat, if I could just get enlightened, then when I go home, everything will be great. So they were expecting enlightenment, expecting to unify their body and mind, expecting to use the method really well, but none of those things happened. And they may feel that, you know, this retreat was meaningless, useless, and feel that it was a, a failure. And there may be another kind of、um, practitioner, who、um, they had all sorts of experiences. You know, while using the method, they they had all these. Different states arise, and all these different experiences happen. You know, they saw things, they heard things. Of course, we're always hearing things, but you know, it means hearing special things, hearing you know, music. It almost as if hearing music that's coming down from the heavens and praising us, and ah, it's wonderful, beautiful. <coughs> Or、uh, maybe they smelt something. They smelled some wild flower that only grows in the far reaches of the forests in in some faraway land. And、huh? what is that? What is that strange smell? It almost smells like that flower. Hey, but wait a second! That flower doesn't grow in this time of year. Wow! Amazing! And then feel that yeah, this is really this is this is experience.、It、must be practicing well. <coughs> And other things, you know, they see light, feel something special, 
or just have all sorts of um, reactions of body and mind, and they feel that this was a good retreat, you know, finally. And they feel good, and they go home, feel that they had a good retreat, and uh, that they've collected these experiences with them. But they may find that when they get home, all of a sudden if something just doesn't look so right with one of their family members, or some little thing happens, all of a sudden, when these emotions explode, and then ah, they start fighting with uh, you know their family member, and uh, it's like, uh, does that mean it was a good retreat? That after retreat, it's like as soon as you go home, you explode and like let everything fly and and uh, you know now let all of your emotions explode and and have these. <coughs> very volatile interactions with people. And, uh, you know, people also think, wow, this is the result of going in a Chan retreat? And they may question Chan practice after seeing you come home, actually afraid to see you come home after Chan retreats. And it's a good question to ask, what were you doing on retreat? And what are you practicing? If this is Chan practice, well, then it goes to show that there's something going wrong there. Whereas for the person who maybe felt they weren't practicing so well and that they didn't experience anything, of course they didn't get enlightened, but they didn't even experience unified mind. <clears throat> they didn't see anything, they didn't hear anything. And they maybe weren't even using the method very well. They found it very difficult to use the method. But actually, when they get home, they would find that, well, first of all, on retreat, although they didn't have any special experiences, they may have realized that, hey, I realized that my breathing was very unnatural. I realized that I don't even know how to breathe or that my breathing is always, you know, unnatural. <coughs> and it's unnatural <clears throat> because of usually, you know, we're very tense or we have a lot of emotions churning inside of us. And when our emotions churn, our breathing is usually, you know, very rough and coarse and we... <laughs> and on retreat, this person may have found that, hey, when I relax, and my emotions are more settled, my breathing is actually natural. My breathing is actually smooth. And so they actually start to develop an awareness of themselves, an awareness of how they're usually quite tense, their emotions are often going and their minds are unsettled, but they realize how to regulate this through regulating the breathing and through awareness of the breathing. <clears throat> and when they go home, they'll also find that um, when they encounter certain situations that usually would get their emotions, you know, up and all of a sudden they encounter the situation and again they feel <laughs> the breathing starts to get heavy again, the emotions start to rise but at this time they can catch it. They're aware of it and all of a sudden they feel the breathing going like this and they say, wait a second, something's wrong here and then they just relax themselves they pay attention to the breathing, regulate their breathing, and maybe they don't have to count to 10, but just through doing that practice of coming back to the breathing, they're able to settle themselves. They're able to let the breathing become natural, and they're also able to settle their emotions. And maybe, you know, maybe they're usually quite quick to get angry, and they're about to say something to the person they see, and it's about to explode, and they're, they're their family is getting ready for it and they're, they're preparing for the explosion and then all of a sudden the person relaxes, they count their breathing, breathe naturally and everybody else kind of feels a little safer and calms down. So the person themselves recognizes that they're able to adjust themselves and their family or their friends also see that, wow, you know, you're, not, uh, you're not getting so mad anymore. huh? And they see that Chan practice has some benefits. And you yourself, because you're able to settle yourself down, 
then you're able to deal with these situations. And actually, <clears throat> when you're more settled and your emotions are not running wild, you can see that actually it's not such a big deal. The situation that had gotten you upset is it's really not so, such a big deal. And in this way, you know, although it wasn't such a special retreat, the person was able to really learn something and bring this practice back home. So as for what kind of retreat a person can have, which one do you want? Which kind of Chan practice do you want to engage in? Uh,有些,呃,时候呢,我们去参数,就像第一种心态的,就是在参数里面呢,啊,非常的用功,然后呢,尽量的去,呃,得到各种不同的经济和体验。可是呢,他的这个身心,实际上没有任何的, 或者是没有真正的改变动不动就是见光见色纹身所以他可能也常常要来佛法或者是我们中国禅宗的禅真正佛法的禅越来越敏锐然后在清楚的状态里面呢我们的心是安稳的或者是某一些事情发生的时候呢
啊，这个就是莫合照了吗？哎，这个就是专注绝招的功夫了吗？哎，然后这个功夫你在禅堂里面用了以后呢，你可以把它得到这个受用啊，你可以把它带回去，在你的日常生活中跟别人互动、跟别人相处，在处理事情的时候呢，它的作用发挥出来。所以呢，你这么清楚的照见这个因缘。然后你的心不受动摇，不受干扰，你就能够做主的去处理这个事情。然后在能够做主在处理事情的时候呢，你的心会从正面的角度，从这个善的角度、善法的角度呢去看。然后在处理的过程里面呢。你是希望把这个事情呢处理好，然后这个处理好呢是正面的，是善的，所以呢，你在运作这个心理，要去把这个事情处理好的时候呢，它会是一种慈悲的心，就会是一种呢，希望这个事情能够让双方在互动的时候都是欢喜的，都是快乐的，而。不是伤害的，然后苦恼的，哎，所以呢，慈就是给予快乐，给予欢喜；悲就是减轻或者拔除苦恼，拔除这个伤害。所以你那个时候呢，在要处理这个事情的时候，你要有动作吗？要有回应吗？哎，你的回应呢，就是这种心理啊、哦，你希望说。即使呢，这个事情发生的时候呢，不顺我的意，但是呢，我不动摇，我在处理它，在回应它的时候呢，我不让这个不好的负面的情况呢增加，我还要让它减轻。好，那如果是跟别人互动的时候呢，有了一些不愉快的或者是负面的状态的时候呢，你把它转过来，你是用一种。欢喜的、快乐的心，或者是你用一种正面的态度去处理这个事情，因为你的心能够做主嘛，所以你可以把这个行为里面良好的这个品质加进去，你的行为加进去，你跟别人互动相处的那个关系里面去，然后把一些原本。当时呢，在显现出来的时候是负面的，是苦恼的，是伤害的那个状况呢？怎么样？调整过来。如果你能够做到这样的话呢，其实有没有开悟呢？都没有关系了。如果你开悟了以后呢，还是四处讲话伤人，你说这个是开悟吗？啊，你跟人家讲开悟，没有人相信。哎，然后讲的话都很有问题，啊，所以呢，我们要知道说，实际上呢，生活就是我们的道场来的，就是我们禅修。所以所有的禅修，它一定是要能够，至少我们讲佛法啦，或者是我们的这个中国禅宗的这个禅修，它一定是这个样子的。也就是说，我们在完全清楚。觉照自己的状态、身心状态跟外在的这个因缘的同时，我们的心做得了主，在我们的心做得了主的时候呢，我们流露出来的，是一种慈悲，或者是很好的、很正面的一种修养、一种行为，来回应我们面对的这些种种的这个因缘、种种的这个境界。那么，如果我们是这样子的话呢，我们就是真正在禅修，这个也是我们禅修真正的功能、真正的作用。So when people come on retreat, again they may be expecting all sorts of things, expecting to be enlightened, expecting to have all these different states of body and mind appear. Seeing light, hearing sounds, smelling things, 
feeling all sorts of, you know, very unique, special sensations. <clears throat> and because of that, they work really hard on retreat. They work so hard. They plunge themselves into the method, and maybe they do experience all these things. And then they feel that, ah, oh, now I'm really practicing. When in actuality, they may not be really using their method at all, but they're just generating all these different reactions of body and mind. And then, when they get home, it's like all of their practice in the Chan Hall, when they get home, seems to disappear. Again, when they encounter situations, uh, their emotions explode, and they're almost just the way they were before they even started practicing. It seems that the practice doesn't work for them, but it only works for them in the Chan Hall, because the Chan Hall is the only time where they can, you know, generate these experiences. In daily life, all of a sudden they have to deal with people, deal with things, and then, you know, all of their vexations appear. All of their um, troublesome emotions explode. And it must be that, I don't know, is this their original face to begin with, I guess? This very explosive and volatile person? <coughs> or the very vexed person? And because they're not able to really bring the practice into their daily life, they may come to retreat all the time. They really just... They, they do as many retreats as they possibly can just because in daily life they don't feel a sense of the practice bringing any benefit. They can only get those experiences in the Chan Hall and feel that they're working hard. If this is the case, can we really consider this Chan practice? In terms of Chinese Chan, in terms of Buddha Dharma, the real practice of Buddha Dharma, this is not practice. Real practice, real Buddha Dharma, Chinese Chan, is practice amidst daily life. Again, practicing on retreat is important. And we do sitting meditation, a lot of meditation on retreat. <coughs> we deepen our practice, we familiarize with the methods, we strengthen our practice, but then we bring the practice back home. And again, yes, we do the formal practices, we need to do sitting meditation at home, and we cultivate this um, quality of mind which is concentrated and aware. As we mentioned, this quality of mind can also be described as being um, silently illuminating. <clears throat> Where you are very clearly aware of your state. You may have uncomfortable feelings, you may have wandering thoughts, you may have all these different um, conditions arising in your body and mind as well as the environment but because you're practicing because you're doing the sitting because you're doing the practice while you're moving uh, in active situations <clears throat> then this quality of mind of being clear yet stable illuminating yet silent begins to really um, um, establish itself in yourself so that in the midst of all these different causes and conditions that you're facing, because really every situation that you face is just such a variety of these different causes and conditions, a variety of elements. <coughs> and many of these conditions may be the things that you don't want to experience. Maybe you don't want to hear a person say a certain kind of thing. Maybe you don't want a certain situation to happen, but it happens. People say things. These things are out of your control. But because you're practicing, because you're establishing the practice in daily life, you're clearly aware of the situation. It's not that you don't become aware of them. You're very clearly aware of all of these causes and conditions. But at the same time, your mind is unmoved, stable. So with this stable, yet clear mind, you're very clearly aware of the causes and conditions not emotionally stirred, and because of that, you become in control of yourself. <coughs> Being more in control of yourself, or having more self-mastery, 
then you're able to deal with the situation properly. You're able to see the situation clearly. You're very stable, very clear. And so you know just how to deal with the situation. And in dealing with the situation, you do so in a very positive manner. Because your mind and, and, and your body are stable and clear, naturally this sense of um, wholesomeness arises in your mind when you have to deal with something. Because in daily life, of course, it requires that we respond. It requires that we act. But in the midst of responding, in the midst of acting, because we have our practice, our actions and our responses are more wholesome. And our whole perspective is more positive. We have a completely positive outlook on things. And this positive outlook has um, you know, joy there, compassion there. So that when we have this um, compassionate attitude and we have to deal with a situation, <clears throat> naturally, our actions and our responses will um, make others feel happy, make others feel more at ease. And actually, this is the essence of compassion. Compassion in Chinese is cibei. The word ci means to bring joy. And the word bei means to lessen suffering or to remove suffering altogether. <coughs> so with a very stable and clear mind, clearly seeing the situation, and with a very joyful attitude, a very positive attitude, when we respond, we're helping others to feel joyful, helping others to lessen their own suffering. And we also, we ourselves are joyful, we ourselves feel less suffering. And in this way, um, our practice is really, you know, Chan practice. It's the practice of establishing this clarity, calmness, and compassion in our daily interactions. <clears throat> this is what we can refer to as Chinese Chan practice. Otherwise, if we find... <coughs> <coughs> if we find that in our daily interactions, you know, our emotions, again, are explosive. And whenever we say something, we hurt someone. Whenever we do something, it's hurtful to ourselves, to others. And we ourselves may think that, you know, on our retreat, we got enlightened. But if we go back to daily life and we still act like that, what kind of enlightenment is that? What kind of experience is that? And what kind of practice is that? So we need to see that our practice needs to be completely integrated into our daily life. And this way, we really are practicing and bringing benefit through compassion to ourselves and to others. <coughs> 作用或者是好处 很正面的一种心理。如果你是真正从禅修里面呢，得到受用的话，那么这一种正面的这种心理的品质修养的这个品质呢，它会很自然的流露出来。好，你会感觉它是从内心流露出来的。所以如果禅修过后呢，你发
，你也会用方法来调和自己。啊，那这个就是一种慈悲心啊，自己会增长这个快乐，然后分享自己的快乐给别人。那么看到别人有快乐的时候呢，你也会分享。啊，因为我们有些人呢，他是相反的，看到别人有快乐、别人有好处的时候呢，他不是分享的。他不是随喜的，他是什么呢？他是嫉妒的。嘿，那么一块一下子就反映出来，表示说你大概经常就是这个样子喽。对<笑>，那你就发觉到说你的心态整个调整了、改变了，然后呢，都是很正面的角度看事情、看问题，然后采取的方式呢，都是希望。把这个事情处理好，而不是增加这个问题的严重性，或者是不是在增加这些伤害，而是让这个问题呢能够更好的去处理它。啊，然后我们呢，在这个过程里面发觉到说，自己呢也会很感恩所有的因缘，因为呢。这些因缘出现的时候呢，都让我们可以清楚的照见自己的身心的状态，然后可以用一个很好的方式呢去处理它。然后这些因缘呢，都会让自己呢学习，然后帮助自己成长。包括一些显现出来很负面的那些现象，外在的这个现象，我们都同样的能够很好的去。面对他，然后从中呢学到，然后自己在这个学习的过程中能够成长，所以我们都是充满感恩的心，然后心里面呢总是感觉到说自己有很多东西要学，啊，然后自己来参修的时候呢，希望能够让自己的智慧呢更加增长，自己的慈悲更加增长，那么整个心态的这个。啊，调整，或者是有一些人基本上就这种心理，然后他会增长这个力量。那有一些人是，呃，可能来禅修之前呢，还是带了很多负面的东西，或者是发现自己很多妄念、很多烦恼。可是呢，禅修过后呢，就发觉到说这些东西呢，啊，这些比较负面的，它它在减轻了，然后比较正面的呢，它不断的在增长了。啊，那就是表示说，那我们真正是把功夫用上去了，然后真正从禅法里面呢得到这个受用。但实际上呢，在过程中，有时候我们还没有能够直接感觉到说，从内心流露我们的感恩心，流露我们的慈悲心，流露我们的这个智慧，我们也要很清楚的啊，在跟别人互动的时候。在日常生活中，尽量让我们的心是站在这一面的。啊，什么事情发生，用一种感恩的心，用一种慈悲的心来看它，用一种智慧呢来对它做判断。那么这样子也是把我们的这个心里面很良好的这种品质呢，能够让它发挥它的作用，发挥它的功能。那如果呢，我们。禅修的时候呢，发现说过程中真的没有得到很多的这个体验，但是呢，却能够回去以后啊，懂得用这样的一种方式呢来生活，那就是你的禅修有得力了啊，就是用上力量了，所以呢，它有种种的功能跟作用呢发挥出来。那么，即使每一次禅修，你都发觉到说，呃，平平的，没有什么特殊的体验，但是每次呢，都能够把自己的身心安定下来，能够让自己呢清楚的觉照，好，那么这个这方面的这个功夫呢，是越来越安稳，啊，然后越来越深，越来越清楚，那就实际上呢，你的这个禅修的功夫呢，是真正的已经。得力了，已经受用了，已经上路了。那如果我们呢？啊
，禅修的时候呢，很多经验，然后就觉得自己修行很好，然后呢，增长了这个我慢心，哼，觉得说，哎呀，我真的是不想跟这些人相处在一起，所以呢，我宁愿躲在禅堂里面。为什么呢？这些人都没有修行的。啊，跟他们相处，你知道几痛苦、几难过啊！他们什么都不懂，又没有智慧，又没有慈悲。你有智慧，你有慈悲啊！<笑>你只有慢心，<笑>觉得自己是很有修行的人。然后呢，一跟他们这些人讲起这个禅修的时候呢，哇，自己有多少体验，让人家感觉哇，你真的很高啊！然后让人家觉得说，这个禅修是高不可攀。太远了，像我们这样的人哦，大概我们不能修行。所以你跟人家接触的时候呢，你是让人家感觉到说，禅修是很远的事。啊，像你们这些这个根基那么钝的人哦，你不用想禅修的啦。你们还是乖乖做别的事情好了啊。像我们这种一进禅堂就所有的经验都出来了，我们这种才是立根的，才是禅修的料哦。那么最后呢，你身边的人，每个人，都让你的这个很高很高的姿态呢，给压住了，然后呢，给吓跑了。最后没有人敢来禅修，没有人敢来学佛。你都没有分享你的体验，没有分享你禅修的好处给他们，反而把他们赶走了。所以呢。你这种呢，真正是禅修吗？是禅吗？不是的。所以我们发觉到说，真正你得到这个受用的时候呢，你就会很愿意跟别人分享。那么怎么样跟别人分享呢？你会更慈悲，你会更有智慧，你会常常充满感恩的心，跟别人相处，跟别人互动，然后会把自己的这些良好的心理的品质呢，去跟别人分享。那么让身边的人发现说，禅修呢其实，并不像我们想象的那么高，但是呢，它很有用。哇，这个朋友一禅修回来哦，你看，整个人的品质，整个人的这个修养呢，就真的是改善了，跟他相处呢很愉快，很欢喜，然后常常从他那边呢，就可以得到。很多的那种启发，啊，需要他帮忙的时候呢，哎，他就很愿意来帮忙。那么这样子的话呢，这些人就靠过来了，他们就来参修。那么这个呢，才是我们所谓的禅，也才是我们真正参修的受用，也才是我们真正在日常生活中把我们的禅法。用进去，所以如果我们在这个过程里面，当然你可能没有办法一下子做的那么好、那么多、那么完整，但是呢，你就可以发觉到说，点点滴滴里面呢，这个禅法呢就渗透进去你的生活，然后呢，让你的生活啊品质呢不断的在改，那么还有呢，你自己本身的品质也在改。提升人的品质嘛，对不对？禅法啊，就这个意思啊，啊，那么大家的品质都那么高的时候呢，我们就在净土了吗？建设人间净土，这个就是禅法呢，啊、哦，所以呢，这个观念非常的重要。如果你们呢，具足了这个观念的话呢，你就发觉到说，日常生活中。禅修其实呢不难，所以呢，回到办公室禅修，进到禅堂上班，哎，所以整个生活都是禅了。So I'm talking about the benefits of practice for a practitioner who's really practicing. When they bring the practice back home, they find that their body and mind is both settled and clear at the same time. They're clear about their body and mind. They're clear about their surroundings. 
They're very clear about the different situations they face. <clears throat> and being very clear about these various causes and conditions and a master of themselves. Actually, naturally, uh, wisdom and compassion just flow forth from their mind. And, you know, what is wisdom? Uh, for this person, when they engage in their daily life, if they feel that they have more wisdom, wisdom refers to because they can see the conditions very clearly, then when they have to make judgments or have to make decisions, these decisions are more appropriate or more fitting for that situation and more helpful for the various parties involved. <coughs> and at the same time, compassion arises. And again, compassion is this uh, consideration for others in hoping that while you're dealing with these situations, you're bringing joy to others. While you have this very optimistic attitude in dealing with things, in responding, you're also helping to relieve them of their suffering. And for yourself, it's equally the same. You're happier, you're optimistic, and you're also suffering less, dealing with things better. <clears throat> so this is... Uh, a result of really bringing the practice into daily life. Um, there's a lot there, just let me reflect. Um, also, for those people who, again, if they're just, if they're just looking for experiences, looking for um, different uh, phenomenon to happen to their bodies and minds on retreat and then they just they go back they go back into daily life and they may feel that they're great practitioners now they feel that uh, they're so good at practice you know they can experience all these things they can understand buddha dharma if they need to say something or just or or talk about buddhism it seems they know everything they could say everything there is to say and that they feel actually that they're such a good practitioner that their minds are just filled with arrogance now. It's possible that instead of actually bringing the benefits of practice to others, they're actually just more and more arrogant. For a person who's really practicing, naturally, even if, you know, even if this person is not at a, at a place in their practice where everything just naturally flows, you know, the wisdom and compassionate responses just flow from their mind, you know, that's also fine for someone who's really working on the practice in their daily life as well as retreat. They find that on retreat, again, they may not have such great experiences, they may not have such, you know, interesting things happen, but they're more and more stable each time. They're more and more able to use the method to calm their bodies, to clarify their minds each retreat. And they find that, well, of course, they still get tense, of course, their emotions still arise. Of course, their minds are still scattered. But they have a method, and they're working on this method. <clears throat> and so that every time they detect that their body and mind has become unsettled, then they have this method, and they're gradually able to adjust themselves, gradually able to return to the method, stabilize and clarify their mind. And they find that, well, maybe they're not enlightened. Maybe they're... Um, uh, you know, their practice isn't as perfect as they hope it could be, but they realize that their vexations are less and less. They realize that the sense of joy and the sense of ease that they experience is more and more. <clears throat> Sometimes, though, you won't even be able to notice it. Sometimes you don't even experience that you're changing, but actually you are changing. As you're really working on the practice, you're changing, you're improving, you're developing yourself, you're developing your calmness and clarity, and you're um, uplifting your character, so to speak. By doing this, this whole process is essentially uplifting the character, improving yourself. <clears throat> and so it may not be noticeable, but it's happening. You're going through the process and you're improving. <clears throat> and when this happens, you'll find that still in your daily life, 
you still have problems, you still have difficulties. Again, your vexations arise. Again, you find yourself caught in your old habits, but you're aware of them. You're clearly aware of these habits. You're clearly aware of these vexations. So again, when they arise, you have a method and you're more familiar with the method. So you're able to deal with them and resolve these vexations much more quickly than you were able to do so before. <coughs> and that being the case, you find that in your daily life, you really start to feel much more stable, much more at ease. And happiness comes from that. And this is a kind of wisdom. And also, you feel the sense of, you know, this is so good, these experiences or this quality of life that you now have is so different. It's so, so beneficial to you that naturally you want to share with others. You naturally have this, tension, uh, this uh, intention to bring the benefits to others. <clears throat> and how do you do that? Well, just by being your happy self, just by being optimistic, the people who are around you will naturally feel that, you know, when I'm around this person, I feel good. You know, I, I like being with this person. You know, when I'm with this person, I feel so inspired. So you're, you begin to inspire others and bring this joy to others just by um, you know, being yourself, bringing your, your calmness and your clarity into your interactions with others. Naturally, this is a way to share. And this kind of wanting to share, this wanting to benefit others, is a natural result of really, <coughs> really gaining benefits from the practice in your daily life. And again, on the other hand, if you have all sorts of experiences on retreat and you yourself feel like you're this, this, this master now who has all of this experience and all of this Buddha Dharma knowledge, and then when you encounter people, all that you portray is this kind of arrogance, like, hmm, you know, I'm a Chan practitioner. I don't need to spend time with these people. These people aren't practitioners. They don't know how to practice. <sighs> They're not worth my time. I'm going to go back to retreat. And then they probably spend more time in retreat because they can't stand being with other people, and other people can't stand being with them. So they just go back and retreat, and they, they practice and get their experiences. <clears throat> and when they talk to people, people may ask about the practice because maybe they, they profess their prowess in their meditation and it seems like to other people, wow, you know, Chan practice, it's so lofty, so amazing, you know, so grand that it's, it's, it's too much for the ordinary person. And then when we talk about it, it almost just comes across that way. Oh, Chan practice is probably not for you. You couldn't do Chan practice, just don't even try. And this kind of attitude completely discourages people. They feel that, on the one hand, maybe they feel that, wow, you're so special, because you yourself feel you're special. And then they feel that, wow, this practice is, sounds, so, sounds so deep, sounds so mysterious. I probably couldn't practice this stuff. So they don't even try, and they don't even approach Chan practice. <coughs> and if this is the case, are you really sharing Buddhism? Are you really sharing Chan? Actually, are you really gaining any benefits? Or are you just gaining arrogance? If this is the case, if um, this arrogant approach not only discourages people, but it can also just scare people. People, you know, when there's a person, if, if you're very arrogant about your own self and your own practice, this kind of arrogance um, can can almost suppress people and make them feel so pressured or so suppressed by your attitude that they don't want to be near you and they run away. So instead of delivering sentient beings, you're scaring off sentient beings and nobody comes to the practice. If this is the case, this is really not engaging in the practice, you're not gaining benefits from the practice and you're not sharing it with others. So you really need to take a look at yourself, take a look at your situation. And what is your approach to practice? If you can have the right attitude or the right concept that practice is your whole life and that practice is just about 
reducing your vexations, um, improving your quality of mind, improving your character, and then helping others to uplift their character, <coughs> it will be just like the, the saying, or just as the, the, um, the ethos of Dharma Drum that Sifu promotes, to uplift the character of humankind. When you do that, when you uplift your own character, uplifting others, we're really building a pure land on earth. And we would feel that everywhere is a pure land. So if we have this concept, then we'll be inclined to, at all times, in all places, apply ourselves to the practice, develop ourselves in the practice, and then share the practice with others. And this is the true meaning of wisdom and compassion. This is the true meaning of Chan practice. So again, when you go to work, you're going to cultivate your Chan practice. When you come to retreat, you're just coming to work. So in this way, you'll see that um, your daily life and your practice are just one totality. Your whole life itself is Chan practice. <laughs>